Moneybox is a simple investing service which rounds up your spare change and gets those pennies invested hassle-free. It's low cost, but it lacks some important features. Here we walk through the service and give it our steps to investing score. Hi, I'm Marcus De Silva and welcome to the Steps to Investing platform reviews where we look at the UK's major investing platforms and then review essential parts of the business to help you find the right service for your investing needs. My business partner Simon Longfellow and I have over 30 years of investing industry experience between us having worked at investment platforms as well as firms that run and manage funds. It means we know exactly what you need to look for when it comes to choosing the best investments and investment services. Our reviews are going to focus on two types of platforms. DIY platforms like Interact Investor or AJ Bell, which tend to be full service and quite wide ranging in terms of the investments you can choose, as well as what we call do it with me platforms commonly known as robo advisors or digital wealth managers. And these tend to be quicker and easier to get investing, but more limited in terms of the service they offer and the investments they offer. You can find the full review and many, many more on our website totally for free. Please go to stepstoinvesting.com. Okay, let's get on to Moneybox. Now this is a simplified investing platform that we call Do It With Me Services. Usually these have quite attractive and clean websites and tend to offer quick assessments of your goals and attitudes to risk before directing you into one of their several multi-asset funds. Now these are just usually giant funds with lots of low cost trackers in them that spread your investments pretty widely across different markets and assets as well, like shares and bonds. Now, Moneybox is a little bit different. It has what we call a roundups feature. It's become quite well known for this. And this is where it rounds up your everyday purchases to the nearest pound and then takes those pennies and automatically invests them in the stock market as a way of encouraging you to save and invest. It also doesn't have any risk questionnaires and offers direct investing in the underlying trackers too, which is quite unusual for these types of services. In this review, we're going to assess five areas of the business. The investment accounts available, the kinds of investments you can make, the account features, the ease of access to your investment accounts, and then the costs. We'll then finish with our overall rating for the platform. Please leave any comments below as well if you've got any questions and we'll get back to you. Okay, let's get on to having a little look at the website. Here we are on its home page. Lots of nice calming colors as you would expect from financial service providers. Uh, first thing to mention, you know, this is an app. This is an investing app. So everything within this page is sort of designed to get you to download that app. You don't do the investments through this website. This really is a bit of a marketing tool for them and sort of describing exactly what the service does. Um, you won't do any. You won't do any investing through this, and you can see the app here. Uh, you know everything we've heard about it is very good, and also when you go down to its its trust pilot scores here um, and reviews, you can see that it, it does quite well. Seven hundred thousand people apparently have saved and invest through their service. Whether they funded those accounts and just opened them, we don't know, but that is certainly a lot of people. So it's it's definitely quite uh, quite popular. I think the other thing that strikes me as well is this roundups feature, which is, you know, it's one of those, um, one of the key things that's quite unique about Moneybox. So, you know, when you're going out there and spending spending that money, you can see here, you know, 240 on your, on your coffee, it's probably gone up now with inflation. Um, it just rounds things up to the nearest pound and then scoops all those extra bits and then invest that for you, which, you know, is really neat. It's quite, quite neat way of sort of saving without even realizing it um, and just drip feeding money into the market, which is quite wise because markets go up and down. So you, you're sort of getting the market at every point along and over long periods of time, they do tend to go up. So it's quite a nice, neat way of investing in the market. I think the other thing is just this arranging how they kind of view their service and what they're offering under these goals. I like that, you know, imagining what we're trying to do with our finances and then sort of structuring all the tools underneath that, I think is quite relatable. It's quite a neat way of kind of uh, describing things. 
So let's start off with this investing side of things. So this is talking about everyday investing. We're talking about goals that are generally between five and you know however many years, long-term goals, but we're not talking about retirement. We're not talking about uh, much later on in life, okay? And there's a few different things that you'll use, but very much the first thing that you should always use is your stocks and shares, ISA. So this is an, a, an account like any other, you just put money into it, but it's been incentivized by the government. And what the government has said is, each tax year, you can put 20,000 pounds into this account and invest with it. And any gains that you make, any income that you receive, any of that stuff, there's no taxes that you need to pay on that. In fact, you don't even need to tell us about it. You don't even need to fill it in your tax return. So that just means that it's just very hassle-free investing. You're not worrying about whether or not you're doing the right things or not. It doesn't matter how much you gain as well. That 20,000 pounds could go to 2 million and there's still no taxes to pay in any of that stuff. And then the next year you can open up another, another ISA and put another 20,000 pounds in. So absolutely, if you are investing, you should be starting off and using um, your ISA allowances first as well. A few things to note though. They've kind of got lots of companies here. Don't be fooled because you're not going to be able to invest in individual shares by this. And I thought that was a bit misleading. Um, you're going to be investing through the money box suite of uh, collectives or funds that invest in lots of companies. You're not going to be doing any, any investing in direct shares like through free trade. That's not what this kind of service is about. Also, the ISA isn't flexible. So some services will offer a flexible ISA so that you can take money out of it and then when you put it back in, it isn't double counted against that £20,000 limit that you're allowed each tax year. Um, so you can use it a lot more like a normal account rather than, than having to worry about taking money out and losing that, those sorts of um, uh, what, you're, what you're allowed to use within a year. Um, so uh, that's just one thing to note, but also not a lot of services tend to sort of offer flexible ISAs. Other thing, key thing here, if you're doing any investing outside of your ISA, you've breached that £20,000 limit, then they do have um, this general investment account, which is just a sort of standard account. And there is a junior ISA. So there are actually four different types of adult ISA, but you're also allowed to set up a junior ISA for um, your children. That has a limit of £9,000 a year. You're allowed to put it into it, but it works much the same as an adult ISA. So it's nice that they've got this because again, not all the robos seem to offer this. Let's move on to saving. This is quite unique, I think, uh, or very few offer this, uh, these sorts of saving notice accounts type products. You know, saving is important. You generally, if you have goals that are short-term goals, you know, you've got less than five years, you don't want to be putting money into the stock markets because stock markets can be volatile, but that volatility sort of irons out over time. Whereas if you've got very short-term goals and you need that cash, if you, if you go with stock market investing, it could have fallen in value by the time you need it because it's such a short time frame. So there, there are definite requirements for savings. And you know, one of them is if you want to go ahead and invest in the stock market, you should always have an emergency fund in case something goes wrong, you lose your job. And that's always advised to be three to six months of your cost, your running cost, your living costs. So, um, but you know, there could be many other things that are kind of short term saving products, uh, say, needs for saving. And um, what these do is they, it, there's, you have to give a certain amount of notice before you can get your cash back, put your money in. Let's say you wanted it back. This 45 day account, you'd have to wait 45 days in, until you got it back and you'll get this rate. The longer you uh, give, you allow for, for, for the notice period, the better the rate you can get on that savings product. So that's, that's quite an interesting feature. Next up is the Lifetime ISA. Now this is a, a nuance, it's a type of ISA that's quite specific for younger people doing quite specific things in terms of what they're saving for. So you have to be between the age of 18 and 39 to open one. You're allowed to put up to 4,000 pounds a year into a Lifetime ISA. The government will then turn around and give you a 25% bonus of free money. So really, really, really generous. So if you put that 4,000 pounds in, you get 1,000 pounds. Um, but you can only use it for one of two things, either your first house or you can use it for anything, but you have to wait until the age of 60. 
So uh, it's really great if you're saving for that, that first time house. The other thing to mention is, you know, we mentioned that overall 20,000 pound ISA limit. So if you, you, if you had an, a, a, a lifetime ISA, you, and you used up that £4,000, you'd still have that £16,000 left to put in other ICEs. So that's just something to remember. The final thing to mention is retirement. So they offer a pension, um, they call it a personal pension. So generally when it comes to pensions, you have your state pension, which you pay through, through your national insurance. You might have a workplace pension offered to you, or you can open up your own personal pension. Now, if you're at a big investing service, then they might offer you something called a SIP, a self-invested personal pension. And that tends to be one that has a very, you're allowed a full range of investments within that. This is just a personal pension because it's quite restricted in terms of what you're investing into. It's just their trim number of, of portfolios basically that they offer. You'd get lots of tax benefits when you, when you invest through a pension. So not only is everything that goes on within a pension tax-free, but within a year, you're allowed to put up to £40,000 and you will get the basic ta rate of, of, of tax back paid automatically into your pension. And the investing service will sort that out for you. In addition, if you're a higher rate taxpayer, then you can claim extra relief through your tax return. So it's very, very generous. Not only is it tax-free investing, but you then get this extra stuff from the government as well but you've got to wait before you can access it. Clearly you're saving for retirement. So you have to be at least 55 before you can access your pension and that's gonna to rise to 57 in 2028. Interesting that they offer that. Uh, you know, and one of the common marketing messages that we always see as well with the, um, uh, it's a very clear information, uh, which is good. And also they often talk about sort of this being this service that combines lots of your old um, pensions into one place as well. So, um, but all of them kind of do that. So all in all, we score the this side of things, the accounts available, three and a half out of five. All right, let's get on to the investment side of things. I mean, I think the first thing with Moneybox, you don't get any risk questionnaires, okay? So, that is a, a bit of a downside. Robo advisors, digital wealth managers, do it with me, whatever you want to call it. They do tend to offer this kind of simple assessment of your goals and risks so you can kind of understand whether you're a bit more cautious, you're a bit more adventurous in terms of how much risk you want to take. Moneybox don't, don't do that, um, but they do offer some very broad basic portfolios. And you can see here under starter options, and what these are, are just big fund of fund portfolios. And they, they differ in terms of how much risk these, these funds are, okay? So the types of investments that they're making and therefore the risk that is represented by those in investments. So it's best sort of shown here, you can see the three portfolios here. If you're a bit more cautious, then what you're going to find is they're going to be fewer shares, as you can see within the portfolio, and more bonds, which are um, a safer asset to invest in. And you can see there's also quite a lot of cash within this portfolio too. And the way in which these funds gain access to these different asset classes is by investing in other funds, usually low cost trackers. And the thing about money boxes is you can also invest in those trackers. You don't just have to invest in the fund of fund portfolio. But if you wanna make it really easy and you just wanna get going and you just wanna pick some big broad portfolio according to how much risk you wanna take, then this is kind of a good way to start off. What I found, you know, just, just sort of looking at this, this is quite, this seems quite low risk. And then this seems to jump up a bit. And then the difference between the balanced and the adventurous portfolio doesn't seem as big. A lot of the other robo advisors tend to offer more nuance in terms of these fund of fund portfolios. So they might offer seven different ones that gradually increase in the risk that you're taking. Whereas here with Moneybox, they only offer three. So I didn't think it was sort of the best I've ever seen, but you know, it, it is enough and, and, and you can get going with this as well. The other thing to mention as well is that you can click this socially responsible button as well. So there's actually six portfolios. This has just got this responsible investing kind of um, uh, bent to it. So it will be investing in funds that invest in companies that have things like good 
uh, credentials for environmental, social and governance factors that they, that, that, that they have to display. So this just means that, that the investments that you're making have more of an ethical um, uh, kind of approach to, to the way they're done. And that's very popular at the moment. You know, six pounds in every 10 is invested in these sorts of strategies. So it, it, by UK investors. So uh, you can see, see why they sort of want to offer that. So that makes it really easy uh, for you if you just want to get going. Then there is the underlying trackers that you can invest in yourself. Some of them are available only in the ISA, which actually you can sort of see here. Um, others only in the pension, um, which, yeah, I, I didn't, I, I don't really know why. I guess they're just sort of trying to keep it quite simple for people when they're selecting investments. Um, there's also quite a range, you know, passive funds generally should be quite cheap because they don't have a fund manager that's selecting investments for them. All they do is just track a certain index or market. Some of these depend, you know, are quite specialized, which I thought was quite interesting. You can see here, there's one that just focus on global technology. I think there was, a, there was actually an, another one that's, oh yeah, there's a gold one here, or automation and robotics. So some quite specific kind of flavors of, of these passive funds. Beware of the fees. That is a, you know, 0 0.12 is a very cheap fee for, for a passive. 0.55 I would say is on the more expensive end. So just think about the investment costs of, of, um, uh, of, of the investments as you, as you select them and, and think about that cost of part of your portfolio. Final thing to mention, let's just have a little look at the investments for your personal pension. Um, and I found these quite interesting because there are very few, there's only four, um, which is very, very restricted. If I was investing for my pension, I'd want a bit more choice in this. That's something con to consider. It, 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 is, it is quite a, a trim selection uh, in terms of your, your pension there. So overall, compared to other robo-advisors and digital wealth managers though, it is quite an interesting selection of investments. We score it four out of five. Let's have a look at some of the account features. So I mean, look, this, you know, we're sort of looking for all sorts of different things like um, monthly investing, um, auto rebalancing, roundups, all sorts of help that you might need uh, when it comes to your investments. And uh, yeah, I don't know if Moneybox was that, that great for this thing really. I mean, the roundups feature, which I sort of discussed a bit earlier, is definitely one of those things that was quite unique to Moneybox and quite interesting about the way in which it encourages you to save and invest and of course you don't just need to use that you can then dump in lump sums as you sort as and when you kind of get them um, so you know that is still available this is an interesting feature um, I think the other thing probably to mention as well is that it's this sort of lack of risk questionnaires really I don't really know why they haven't got those with the service because it seems quite a simple thing to sort of implement it does help people think about their investments in that way. I suppose because they don't have, you know, it's not all based around those fund of fund portfolios. You're allowed to invest in in, in the underlying passive funds as well. And, and you wouldn't necessarily be directed in the right way from, from a risk questionnaire into one of those passive funds. So I guess that's why they, they sort of don't have it. Um, but nonetheless, it, it does make it sort of stand out against its other robo peers and the fact that it, it sort of doesn't um, have that. There were other things as well. We were trying to get information to do with you know various bits when we were doing this analysis and you just couldn't find that information. It wasn't very easy to sort of get hold of it. So it didn't do that well actually in this section. We scored it one out of five. Next up, we're gonna have a look at access and support. So, you know, the main way we've already discussed that, you know, this is through an app. So that's why you kind of got your number here and, um, you know, you can go to the app stores and various things. That's how you're gonna invest. Um, you know, if you like using a website, I suppose that is, that's one downside. The other thing then is sort of the support and, you can't speak to anyone over the phone, which can be a bit frustrating. You can sort of end up in these endless sort of FAQ um, uh, type uh, pages, and you can you can chat to someone over 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 the app, and also email them. But I think that sort of lack of sort of face to face kind of um, not face to face telephone support um, is is something that that does sort of lack a little bit. On this so we scored it two and a half out of five final bit the costs 
So how much is this gonna cost you? And do you know what? I think Moneybox is definitely, it's one of the cheapest out there. And what we did was we had a look at a 20,000 pound ISA portfolio and a few different versions of it, stuff with different types of investments that might cost differing amounts just to have this kind of comparison across the different um, services. So we'll have a little look at this stocks and shares ISA page and run down to the bottom where the costs are. And I'll just take you through these, but they, I mean, really it's very cheap. So you've got this subscription fee that you pay, this flat fee, uh, it's only one pound per month. The first three months are free. So nine pounds in your first year pretty cheap and then they add on this ad valorem so this percentage fee as well which will depend on on how much money that you've got invested which is a, is wh why that's fair is because it means if you have smaller amounts and you're basically getting charged uh, much less so that is charged monthly 0.45 is is pretty reasonable for that and then you've also got these investment costs now we mentioned earlier these different funds that, uh, you know, depending on what they do, if they tend to be a bit more focused and specialized, they tend to have slightly higher fees. So they're your investment costs. Just consider what they are when you're sort of selecting some of the funds to put uh, into your, to your ice or whatever it is. And all that combined will be what you pay per year. But overall, Moneybox is, is very, very cheap. So we scored it five out of five. Okay, in conclusion, it was a clean and easy to use website and the roundups feature is definitely a great idea, but it lacks in certain areas, including drawdown phase for pensions, the risk questionnaires that are kind of missing at the beginning. And also we found finding more detailed information was quite frustrating. I'm also not sure that they're the best fund of fund portfolios I've ever seen, but the costs are certainly competitive and quite compelling. Overall, we scored it three out of five.